I wish to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. I thank them for their continued custodianship and I pay my respects to the eternal Gadigal elders and any other Indigenous people here tonight and offer a sincere hand of friendship on the journey toward reconciliation. I am immensely proud to be a member of the Labor Party, which has a long history of working respectfully with our Indigenous people. And now, in this place, I look forward to continuing our commitment to address the practical inequities that still shockingly befall many Indigenous Australians. I would like to thank the people of New South Wales for electing me to be their representative in this Australia's oldest and most historic parliament. It is an immense honour. I would like to thank the Australian Labor Party and the broader Labor movement for their support over many years. I would not be here in this place without you. I was born in Foster to Jane and Brett Roach and grew up there the eldest of four children, my brother Jordan and my younger sisters Phoebe and Bronte. Foster, on the mid-north coast of New South Wales, is named after one of New South Wales' early and brief premiers, William Foster. It was a typical childhood. School, plenty of sport, hockey in winter, touch football in summer, tennis and dancing all year round. I was a cricket tragic, even learning to manually score games, and I always loved to read, reading anything I could lay my hands on. Attending Foster Public and Foster High Schools, now Great Lakes College, I benefited from many hardworking and dedicated teachers in the public education system. There is no doubt that education has had a transformative effect on my life. One of my earliest political memories is the 1987 federal election. I found the process of entering the polling booth and receiving all of the how to votes very exciting. When we, when we returned home, I conducted my own exit poll, to which my mother replied it wasn't polite to ask. My father asked me who I would have voted for. Bob Hawke, I confidently responded. Why, he asked. Because he's the Prime Minister and I like him. As I grew older, I was quietly told that my family were National Party voters. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. As I grew older, uh, sorry, indeed, I can remember an uncle's birthday party on the night of the 1996 federal election and the joy from many of my relatives. The referendum for an Australian Republic also had a key influence on me as a teenager. As a 16-year-old, I was too young to vote in the defeated referendum of 1998. However, it was my first taste of political campaigning and I was hooked. I was bitterly disappointed with the results, but I slept in my treasured Yes t-shirt. <laughs> Mr President, 16 years later, I still firmly believe that Australia must become a republic as the final step to show our maturity as an independent nation. I find it contrary to the Australian belief in equality that we are still governed by a celebratory, celebrity, hereditary family who live half a world away. I recognise that this issue for many Australians is a secondary concern to finding employment, balancing work and family and, accessing and accessing affordable health and education services. But nevertheless, I believe it is an important issue that will shape Australia's future identity. I hope in time that an Australian re Republic will be one part of the progressive manifesto of a federal Labor government. By now, I was an outspoken progressive at most family gatherings, and despite their more conservative leanings, my Uncle Darrell and Auntie Janine knew there was no turning back for me. Darrell insisted on taking me to meet the Federal Labor Shadow Cabinet when they visited Foster in my final year of high school. It was the first chance I had to meet and talk to elected Labor representatives, and a memory I reminded Darrell of upon my pre-selection. Today, it is a reminder of just how far I have come, from the auditorium at the then Foster RSL to this historic chamber. It is perhaps ironic that I stand here as a Labor member, and indeed that I have devoted my working life to the Labor Party and its ideals. It came as a surprise to me then, when after I had commenced working as a party official, I discovered I had a rich Labor heritage in my family. 
My great great grandfather and his brothers were all Labor representatives from the proud Lazzarini family. Herbert Ferdinand Lazzarini was the mayor of Young in 1931. His brother, Carlo Camillo Lazzarini, was the member for Marrickville and later the member for Western Suburbs in the other place from 1917 until his death in 1952. His brother, Hubert Peter Lazzarini, was the federal member for Werriwa from 1918 until 1931 and then again from 1934 until his death in 1952. Both Carlo and Bert were the first members of parliament of the respective parliaments with Italian surnames and they died only a month apart. Bert, as he was known, was succeeded as the member for Werriwa by the Honourable Gough Whitlam, ACQC. <coughs> like both Bert and Carlo, after growing up in country New South Wales, I was attracted to the opportunities that Sydney could offer. I was determined to come to Sydney to pursue my tertiary education and was fortunate to do so at the University of New South Wales. This is where I formed a close friendship group, like me, all country girls, that's, that I still hold dearly today. Naomi Cronin, Kate Moran, Lucy Gavin, Melanie Barnett, Georgie Baldock and Dana Craft, some of whom are here tonight. They have been the cornerstone of my support network for years and have handed out and voted for me since I first ran to be a student representative many years ago, arguing for a more moderate voice for students. Mr President, it was while I was at university campaigning against John Howard's cuts and unfair changes to higher education as a student representative that I decided to join the Labor Party. I would then go on to become president of the Student Guild and started to realise that there was an opportunity to pursue my political beliefs as more than a pastime, but as a profession. It was also whilst I was at university I first met my wonderful husband, George, but more about that later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dream became a reality when, straight out of Young Labor, I had the privilege of being an official of the New South Wales branch of the Australian Labor Party and went on to be elected as the first female country organiser. Yeah. During this time, I have worked with some of the most dedicated members the Labor cause has the thousands of people who work tirelessly, election after election, often in spite of a large margin in favour of our opponents. It's not easy balancing their work, family and other responsibilities with often travelling thousands of kilometres over the course of an election campaign. They make many sacrifices to do it, but they do it for the greater cause of country labour. These dedicated members and their supporters are the backbone of our party and share a genuine belief in country labour and the Australian Labor Party as the way to improve outcomes in their local communities and regions. Yeah. Mr President, country New South Wales is a diverse and beautiful place. Whether it's the stunning beaches right along the coastline or the gentle rolling hills around Kiama or further west near Gundagai or the dense forests in the northern rivers, or the dramatic mountains of the Great Divide, or the long, wide plains of the far west. Country New South Wales will always be a special place for me. I am lucky to have fond memories right across country New South Wales, whether it was standing with thousands of others in protest at the Grafton Jail being closed, or marching to support your rights at work in Queanbeyan and Dubbo. I have travelled literally hundreds of thousands of kilometres around country New South Wales, mainly driving my trusty Honda Jazz and later a couple of Holden Commodores. <coughs> Mr President, Paul Keating infamously said of his 1993 victory that it was for the true believers. I understand all political parties rely heavily upon volunteers, but there is something special about the people who make up the Australian Labor Party. From our branch secretaries, presidents, delegates to conference, or the volunteers who hand out on election day, I take this opportunity to pay my deepest and most humble respect and gratitude to you. It was a great privilege to be able to serve you as a party official, and I now look forward to doing it as your member of parliament. I am not the first to pay tribute to these true believers, and I hope I won't be the last. 
After almost a decade in our New South Wales Labor Party office, I have seen up close the character and commitment of our party officials, staffers, young Labor members, union officials and ministerial advisers. Too often, these dedicated people are derided by a cynical electorate as commentator, or commentators as hacks, apparatchiks and faceless men. But my experience has shown me that these are the ballast of the true believers, and tonight I thank you. They are those who worked for Labor in the toughest of times, the 1988, 1996 and the 2011 elections, Despite knowing Labor faced electoral defeat, but maintaining their commitment and belief in the Labor values of our nation's oldest party. They are not the fair weather friends. They are there making personal sacrifices when the chips are down and everyone has left the show, fighting hard to preserve the legacy of our movement, even at times when we may have lost our way. Some cynically believe that they are there for the perks or the good times, but they are the ones who toil day after day in good times and bad. These people remain deeply committed, to, deeply committed to the ideals of our party. They don't lose these beliefs just because they work on campaigns or in a union or for a minister. Indeed, these beliefs are what motivate them for the early mornings and the late nights, the impossible deadlines and the unending scrutiny. I know that Labor doesn't have a monopoly on these true believers, they exist on both sides of the aisle and are an essential part of our political system. I have had the good fortune of working with hundreds of these dedicated individuals over many years and pay tribute to these people who become our party's stalwarts. Working as a party official also allowed me to work closely with a number of affiliated and non-affiliated trade unions. There is and always will be a special relationship between the Labor Party and the trade union movement. I would like to thank all of the affiliated trade unions for their support and their peak body, Unions New South Wales, especially Russ Collison and the Australian Workers Union, Jim Metcher and the Communications Branch of the CEPU, Steve Butler and the Electrical Trades Union, Tara Moriarty and the Liquor, Hospitality, Liquor and Hospitality Division of United Voice, Derek Bielan and the National Union of Workers, Gerard Dwyer, Bernie Smith and Barbara Niebart and the Shop Distributive and Allied Employees Association, Alex Classens and the Rail, Tram and Bus Union, Michael Aird and the Transport Workers Union, and finally, Graham Kelly and my own union, the United Services Union. Great union. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I agree with the uh, honourable member opposite. Many people often tritely speak of the tyranny of distance in country New South Wales. The reality of life is that it can take hours of travel to participate in representative sports or charity work or attend a specialist appointment. But the pervading sense of isolation is one that governments must address. The key method for government in addressing these challenges that face rural and regional New South Wales is improving <coughs> connectivity. This applies to all aspects of government policy. I am so proud of the federal Labor government for laying out a plan and beginning to build the national broadband network. This is a vital part of improving connectivity in everything from healthcare to education and especially for businesses in rural and regional areas. Improving connectivity is also an economic imperative. Farms, manufacturers and small businesses cannot reach markets if they don't have appropriate road or freight infrastructure. But we will also have a more cohesive and vibrant society if all parts of our state can feel connected. Indeed, congestion within Sydney is creating an increasing, dis an increasing problem of disconnectedness right here in our state's capital. There is also a disparity between the demographics of our cities and the demographics of our regions, and governments can play an important role in building bridges between the two. Mr President, during my time in this parliament, I will be a strong advocate for working families and the challenges they face. The phrase working families has often been mocked, but I use it deliberately. I firmly believe that governments should support working people who are trying to get ahead whilst also providing a safety net for the most vulnerable. 
This means governments should support jobs, ensure safe and fair workplace practices, universal and accessible healthcare, quality local education and infrastructure to support their daily lives. One issue I hope to focus on during my time in this place is the issue of workplace flexibility. This is still regarded as a tokenistic and fringe issue, but it fundamentally shapes our society and is the key challenge for families. Just as no person is the same, there can be no one-size-fits-all solution for families trying to balance work and parenting. Every family must find the balance that works for them. However, governments need to be innovative in supporting families, especially in those crucial early years after a child is born, but also throughout their lives. Paid parental leave schemes and quality and affordi affordable childcare is a key part of the puzzle, but not the only part. Workplace flexibility, and not just for mothers, and a focus on outcomes rather than simply hours in the office is another part. Embracing technology has an important role to play in this too. It also seems that job sharing rather than part-time positions allows parents the opportunity to return to work in a meaningful way but balance that with their childcare responsibilities at home. Mr President, whilst it is difficult for governments to legislate for flexibility and for individualised solutions, I hope that during my time in this place I will be able to contribute to addressing this important challenge for governments of all levels. I now live not far from the area that my forebear, Carlo, once represented in Earlwood with my amazing husband, George, and our delightful daughter, Anna. We are part of a wonderful community and have some great friends close by, some of whom are here tonight. Through George, I have been introduced to Greece and I loved it so much we were married there almost seven years ago in his mother's village. Who knows, Joseph Hanna, without your intervention, we might never have got there. I have become a true Philhellene and have seen the hardworking and generous nature of Greeks, both here in Australia and in Greece. I share their values of the importance of both family and community within daily life. I also identified with the key role that the church plays within the Greek community as my Christian faith has been a constant in my life and has shaped my values and ethics that I bring this, to this place. Although I was christened in the Catholic Church as a baby, raised in the Foster Baptist Church, as an adult I have converted to the Greek Orthodox faith. I would especially like to thank my Greek godparents, Leah Georgiakis and George Vallis, and Father Leslie at St. Eurasimus in Leichhardt for making me feel so welcome and for his spiritual advice and guidance. There are many people here tonight in the gallery and some more I know watching online. I am so grateful for the love, support and friendship you have shown me over so many years. You have been my companions on this journey so far. But now, this is just the beginning. I will continue to call on you to keep me grounded and in touch as I seek to represent you in this place. I have many, many people to thank, too many to name. Tonight, I will try to mention but a few. However, it is not an exhaustive list. <clears throat> okay. I must begin with my husband, my best friend and my unwavering support, George. There is no doubt that I would not be standing here <clears throat> tonight without George by my side. Yeah. He has supported, mentored... <laughs> <laughs> he has supported, mentored and guided my journey with the Labor Party after I joined as a young, idealistic university student <clears throat> through working in the party office and supporting the many sacrifices we made together. And now, as we begin this next stage, as an elected representative, I am so lucky to have such a smart, loyal, passionate, logical and understanding partner in all that I do. He is a true man of conviction. Whilst many people know George, his quick wit and unmatched campaigning skills, and I agree with Senator Deb O'Neill, he is the best marginal seats campaigner in the country, no exceptions. <laughs> he is also an incredible supporter of women and I am one of the many beneficiaries of this support. 
I can already see our daughter benefiting from this same guidance and love. Fifteen and a half months ago, I gave birth to our delightful daughter, Anna, who's on her best behaviour tonight. <laughs> her calm yet curious nature has been evident from those very first days. Her quiet independence has emerged later. We are truly blessed with our little munchkin. Watching her grow and develop is an endless source of amazement. Anula, I hope your love of books continues to grow and one day you will read this speech and see how much we love you. <laughs> totally oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming a mother certainly has been a life-changing event for me. I am incredibly fortunate to have such supportive bosses in Jamie Clements and Kayla Manane. I am proud to call both of them friends. Jamie, your calm, intelligent and measured leadership was a key part of our recent election success and I hope for our party's sake you continue in your role for many years to come. Thank you for giving me this incredible opportunity. Kayla is a very dear friend of mine and I am already missing working in the same office with her every day. She is one of the toughest and hardest working people I have ever met. She is also an incredible trailblazer as the first woman to be the Assistant Secretary of New South Wales Labor, a position she has thoroughly earned with years of service and dedication to the Labor Party. <clears throat> I would like to thank all of the past General Secretaries and Assistant General Secretaries I have worked with in the party office, in particular Mark Bibb. Sam Dastiari and Chris Minns. Chris, I appreciate your considered advice over many years and look forward to working with you again in this place. I would also like to thank the many party officers, especially Mark Lennon, Tara Moriarty and Deb O'Neill. I, I must also mention the many support staff at the party office who I've worked with over many years. I would like to congratulate our leader, Luke Foley, on the great election result and thank him for his support. I also acknowledge my many state parliamentary colleagues, both here and in the other place. I have many friends, some new, some not so new. I am truly excited when I look around our caucus and see the talented and hardworking people we have representing New South Wales Labor. I look forward to working with all of you to return Labor to government. I would also especially like to thank Noreen Hay and my newest country Labor colleagues, Kate Washington and Jenny Atchison, all strong and inspiring women who I am so proud to be entering Parliament with. Mr President, New South Wales Labor is a truly amazing organisation. It was while I was a member I formed a number of close friendships, which I still have to this day. Sally Situ, Tom Hollywood, Ian McNamara, Tegan Gilchrist, Janae Tabiner, Michael and Belinda Komenos, and later Jay Saval, Josephine Hillard, Luna Zivadinovic, Crystal Valadakis, Alex Cowan, Dorothy Rapasati, and Sarah Coward. I thank you all. In particular, I would like to thank Salim Barber, the most loyal friend and whose inspiring commitment to the union movement has been evident from the very beginning. It is also within Young Labor that I found Blake Mooney, who is beginning this journey with me. Blake, I know you have big things ahead of you. I just hope I can hold on to you for a little while. Within Country Labor, we have so many hardworking representatives who have supported me. I would like to thank the members of the Country Labor Committee that I have worked with, with a special mention to my two chairs, Bryce Wilson and, before that, Harry Woods. Justine Elliott and Joel Fitzgibbon, you are both outstanding representatives for your communities and rural and regional Australia. And Mike Kelly, thank you for your support over so many years. You will soon be back in your rightful place in the federal parliament. To the many candidates who have stood for Labor and country Labor, in particular Steve Wan, Glenn Colometz and Peter Ellum. Through George, I have met and made many friends I now regard as my own including Joseph Hanna, Peter and Kelly Zangari, Sabina Husick, Talal Yassine, Ryan Park and Nagib Almala, amongst others. I thank you for your friendship and your unqualified support for me in all of my political endeavours. I've been lucky to have four wonderful grandparents who have all had a significant influence on my life. Both of my grandfathers had an have an incredible work ethic, something I hope I have inherited. 
and my grandmothers have been the glue to hold their families together. Sadly, my poppy Bob and my grandma can't be here tonight. Poppy Bob passed away in 2008, only months before I married George. But I have no doubt he's watching over me with a celebratory forex in hand. Nothing could keep Joyce and Jim away tonight, though, not even the train line being washed away by recent floods, and they have driven down tonight with my uncle Derek. I am very fortunate to have my late grandfather's brother, my uncle Bill and auntie Imelda, in the gallery tonight, who have always encouraged and supported me. Despite their great success in business, they have maintained their down-to-earth nature, and in recent years we have developed a close relationship, which I treasure. My uncle Bill shares my late grandfather's cheeky sense of humour, and I appreciate my auntie Imelda's measured advice. Your quiet determination and ambition are an inspiration to me. I am truly blessed to have the world's best mother-in-law. Since our first meeting, both Anna and Arthur have welcomed me into their home and their family without question. I am so happy we were able to honour Anna by naming our beautiful daughter after her. I cannot express how much Anna's support and love, especially since our daughter's arrival, has helped me, and I love watching the two of them together. They are the best of friends already. Her very practical support has given me great freedom to pursue my political career for many years. Finally, I would like to thank the many staff of the Legislative Council who have assisted me and made me feel so welcome since my election to this place. Mr President, when the Labor Party was formed 124 years ago, it was to advocate for working people throughout their working life as they raise their families and in retirement. I plan to continue in that tradition. I am a proud Labor member of the Legislative Council, but my heart also lies in country New South Wales, and I hope to represent all of our great state during my time in this place. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mr President, I move that this uh, debate be postponed to the next sitting day. Aye. Thank you so much. I'm a hand The clerk read the order of the day. Yes, Mr Chair, Mosman.